What's up, family? We have some very good news to share with you today. President Biden and the Speaker Kevin McCarthy announced on Saturday that they have reached a deal on the debt ceiling. We also have some college students receiving $1,000 checks. I've got the details to share with you in just a moment, but if you could be so kind and subscribe to the channel, it really helps out a lot. Also, if you end up liking today's video, be sure to hit the like button for us. It's very simple to do and it really helps this channel grow. Now, let's go ahead and start with the video. Starting off, hey guys, this is a very shocking information. Uh, a 12 year old ended up graduating college this year uh, from California, setting the all time school record. Yes, guys, I believe the name is Clovis Hung, walked the commencement stage on Saturday, uh, taking home five associate degrees. Now, again, this particular 12 year old student uh, became the youngest person ever to graduate from a California Fullerton College. And yes, guys, uh, this is very remarkable, I will say. And as you can see right here, this is the actual 12 year old that ended up graduating with five degrees this Saturday. So uh, anyways, guys, definitely want to see some great information like this. Don't we wish all of our 12 year olds could graduate from college? But anyways, guys, kudos to him, Clovis. And guys, uh, just wanted to share that great information to you. In addition to that, in regards to college graduates, some particular college graduates actually received $1,000 checks this past weekend. And that is because a billionaire ended up giving away two and a half million to 2,500 college graduates. And then, check this out guys, he then told them to give away half of the money that he gave to them. So that means they had to keep $500 and give away $500. What a great gesture, guys. I will say it teaches these college students to not be stingy with their money, guys, to give it away because that is the greatest gift of life that you can do and bless someone else. But anyways, guys, it says right here that uh, once you've reached the top of your game, a big part of leadership becomes about giving back to those on their way up, whether that's by time, energy, or lessons learned. And it's a lesson learned that a telecommunications tycoon, Robert Haley, is trying to instill in the next generation of leaders. The billionaire surprised students of the UMass Boston undergraduate class of 2023 with $1,000 each on their graduation day. But the generous gesture wasn't empty. As thousands of students lined up to receive their $1,000 gift, uh, Haley, the co-founder and the CEO, of Granite Telecommunications handed out two envelopes with the cash evenly split. One $500 envelope was labeled a gift and the other one was labeled give. And as you can see, guys, here is just a little snapshot uh, posted by the NBC 10 Boston Network in which the first $500 is for you, according to Robert Haley, and uh, you have to give away the additional $500 as a gift to somebody else. This is great, guys. We love to see stories like this, guys, especially uh, there's multiple stories in this particular instance because uh, the billionaire tycoon gave away $1,000 to 2,500 students. And then on top of that, he forced the 2,500 students to give away an additional $500. So anyways, guys, one person can change lives of millions of people. And in this particular situation, he actually changed the lives of 5,000 people. We love to see this information, guys. So kudos to this particular billionaire as well as these college students on two different efforts graduating college as well as giving away $500 to someone else. So uh, we definitely want to thank them for their great service uh, in this particular situation. So, but anyways, guys, it is not all gravy in regards to those individuals that are graduating from college uh, this season. And that is because the way our economy is going and some college graduates are actually worried about their job prospects, considering that the job market is a little bit shaky right now. And yes, guys, it says that it's college graduation season all around the nation and in the Bay Area specifically. Uh, many of the new graduates will need jobs. And while the overall outlook is encouraging, there is still plenty of uncertainty in the job market. At San Jose State University, more than 7,000 students received their college degrees over this past week, and they are afraid that they might not necessarily land a job in time 
right now guys so uh, anyways guys uh, yes things are a little bit shaky right now but the good news is that these individuals do have a college degree and so that gives them a better prospect of landing a job versus not landing a job because you don't have a college degree so uh, anyways guys uh, moving on to some other news guys we do have some breaking news that happened on Saturday day uh, Saturday evening and that is because we heard from the president President Joe Biden as well as the House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in which they both announced that they have reached a tentative deal in regards to the debt ceiling. And yes, guys, this is some good information because this is going to avoid the U.S. from defaulting on its obligations. And as you can see right here that Biden and McCarthy agreed to raise the U.S. debt ceiling. And I believe that they have agreed to raise it by close to three and a half trillion dollars. And yes, guys, the deal, if enacted by Congress, would take the volatile issue off the table beyond the next presidential election. So again, uh, the good news is that they have come together with a tentative deal on the table worth $3.4 trillion, but this bill still has to go through Congress. It still has to get approved by the House as well as by the Senate in order to get signed by President Biden. But the good news is that they did come to terms in regards to what's going to be included in this debt ceiling deal. And like I said, guys, this is huge because uh, Americans were very afraid right now because they didn't necessarily know whether the U.S. economy is going to tank even more than what it already has, especially for those individuals that are receiving social security benefits as well as those are receiving a uh, u.s uh, snap food stamp benefits as well they were also afraid because they were afraid that their next monthly check would not arrive because of the u.s defaulting on its obligations so uh, the good news right now is that we do have a deal on the table it is a very large deal but the good news is that uh, we have both parties of the aisle President Biden, as well as House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, they are both agreeing with this particular uh, tentative deal on the table. But what is exactly included in this deal, guys? Well, I've already told you that uh, the deal on the table is worth $3.4 trillion. But in addition to that, we have uh, information in regards to what is included in this particular deal. And because this is very important, guys, because it pretty much tells the story in regards to what President Biden had to negotiate on just to get Kevin McCarthy to agree with it and go ahead and move forward with releasing of the U.S. debt ceiling. So uh, anyways, guys, it says in this particular message right here that uh, negotiators for President Biden and Speaker Kevin McCarthy struck an agreement late on Saturday on government spending that will raise the debt ceiling and avert a looming default. Now, this particular deal, which must still make it through uh, the way of the House and the Senate in the coming days, uh, they did come together after days of intense negotiation to resolve uh, disagreements over work requirements, spending caps, as well as other issues in regards to raising the debt ceiling. Now, again, uh, here is what is included in this particular deal, guys. Uh, the number one thing is that uh, it's going to raise the debt ceiling for at least two more years. That means we won't have to deal with the same issue for at least the next uh, 24 months or so. So that is some good news. But I do want to go ahead and uh, flip sides to a little bit of a caveat because we recently heard from uh, the billionaire Warren Buffett. He says that why don't they just get away with the debt ceiling because why do we need to have the debt ceiling when we are just going to continue to borrow money throughout life, guys? So he does have a good point. But anyways, guys, they did agree to raise the debt ceiling for at least the next two years. In addition to that, guys, they did agree to come together in regards to some spending caps. We all know that Kevin McCarthy has been pushing for a cap on the amount of money that President Biden is able to spend during his remaining time in office, in which it says right here that the GOP one pager on the deal said it includes a roadblock on non-defense discretionary spending to fiscal year 2022 levels while limiting the top line federal spending to 1% annual growth for six years. So anyways, guys, they are putting some spending caps on the president in which they believe that he has been spending too much money outside of the military spending in regards to the war in Ukraine. So uh, anyways, guys, they did come to agreement with this as well. And then in addition to that, guys, uh, this is something that the GOP wanted in which work requirements 
environments were one of the largest sticking points in talks in the recent days, with Republicans adamant that tougher work requirements be included in any deal, while the White House balked at changes that would take away assistance from the poor Americans in this country. So it looks like the GOP has won this particular battle on the table, and now they're going to include work requirements in regards to those individuals that are on entitlement programs receiving additional money and benefits from the U.S. government. But anyways, guys, uh, next on the list, uh, it does include COVID-19 funds clawback. We do know that during President Biden's time in office that he approved of millions, if not billions and trillions of dollars of money that is in regards to COVID-19. And as it says right here that the GOP one pager on the deal said that it would claw back tens of billions of dollars in unspent funds appropriated to combat COVID-19, including $400 million dollars from the CDC. And yes, President Biden has indicated in the recent weeks that he would be open to putting unused COVID-19 relief funds on the table as part of the spending negotiations. And it looks like the GOP has won this battle as well. In addition to that, guys, the fourth thing that we have on the list is in regards to the IRS funds. I believe previously that President Biden has announced that uh, he was going to allocate around $80 billion dollars to the IRS to give them some money to hire more people and to go after those individuals that continue to commit fraud as well as to cheat on their taxes every single year. But it looks like right here, guys, the deal would cut some IRS funding without nixing the full $80 billion funding boost over the decade that Democrats approved last year for increased enforcement actions. So again, guys, another particular area right here in which it looks like the GOP has won this battle in regards to the $80 billion in funding for the IRS. It doesn't say how much, guys, but we do know that it is going to cut it down just a little bit, if you will. And then fifth on the list, guys, it looks like permitting reform and environmental provisions is on the table as well. The White House source familiar with the agreement confirmed to the Hill that the tentative deal includes energy permitting reform, a major priority for Senator Joe Manchin, and an aspect McCarthy has said was a possible feature in the deal. Now, the source emphasize that the deal preserves the climate provisions of the Inflation Reduction Act that was signed previously by President Biden in which Biden's signature climate and infrastructure legislation, which the GOP earlier sought to pare down in exchange for debt ceiling increase. And it looks like, guys, the GOP has also won this particular battle. It looks like the GOP is pretty much winning everything that they necessarily wanted. But anyways, guys, moving on, the sixth thing that we have on the list is that uh, no new taxes. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said in a brief statement to the press on Saturday that the deal included no new taxes. There are also no new taxes, no new government programs as well, according to Kevin McCarthy. And Biden had in recent days publicly advocated for revenue sources uh, to be part of the negotiations, specifically focused on closing the loopholes and increasing taxes on the wealthy Americans. But it looks like the GOP has won that battle as well. And then right here we have incentive to pass government funding bills in a move meant to encourage Congress to pass appropriations bills on time. The debt deal includes a measure that caps continuing resolutions to fund the government at 99% of current levels until all 12 appropriations bills are enacted. So again, guys, one more particular thing. It looks like the GOP wanted this, but it doesn't necessarily say, so I won't give them credit for that. And then last but not least, guys, it does say that the administrative pay go. Now it says that Republicans say that the deal includes the first ever statutory administration uh, pay go language relating to agencies proposing spending reductions that accompany discretionary spending increases. Republicans hope this particular measure will result in savings on excessive rules and regulations that are enacted. So it looks like this particular is another win for the GOP. It doesn't necessarily say it, but it sounds like uh, that the GOP were pushing for this as well. So it looks like overall, guys, there are a lot of changes that is in this particular deal. It looks like pretty much President Biden had to give up a lot just to avoid the U.S. from defaulting on its obligations. So anyways, guys, the good news is that they do have a bill on the table and we'll just have to see, guys, how this all turns out. 
once this particular bill reaches the House and the Senate to get their vote before it gets to the president for his signature. Now, in addition to that, guys, we did hear from President Biden after they announced of this particular tentative deal. And it looks like President Biden, as well as House Speaker, have talked to the news media and said that uh, they believe that the American people will actually like this particular deal on the table. They believe that this is some good news, not just in regards to uh, raising the debt ceiling limit, but also they believe the information that is included in this particular deal, they believe that the American people will actually like it. But again, guys, we won't know until the American people actually say whether or not they actually like the information in this particular deal. But it does look like if you are a Democrat, you are probably not going to be too excited to find out that the GOP pretty much won the battle in regards to the negotiations of the dealings in this particular deal. If you are a Republican, you are probably a little bit happier than you have been. And But anyways, guys, we'll just have to see. We should know more information within the next 48 hours or so whether or not the American people, uh, how they feel about this particular tentative deal on the table. But I will say the good news is that it does look like the U.S. doesn't have to worry about defaulting on its obligations anymore. That means Social Security checks going to SSI, SSDI, VA beneficiaries, as well as our seniors, will be going out on June the 1st. Also, the SNAP food stamp benefits will also be going out as well. Hopefully they can get this thing done before then. But anyways, guys, they just have a few more days. We'll just have to see how it all plays out. But anyways, guys, I hope all this information in this video was helpful to you today. Well, anyways, guys, hey, that's all we have for you today. But if you enjoyed this type of content and you want to see more, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like today's video, then go ahead and hit the like button for us. It really helps out this channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But anyways, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching. And I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.